Okay, again, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Alexander Olsi. I'm the service line administrator for the UCSD uh, Center for Transplantation. Would like to welcome everyone here today for the fifth annual update in uh, organ transplantation. And this is the abdominal tract. So uh, every year, uh, we uh, put a couple of uh, these seminars uh, for primarily our internal staff, but we also, in the last couple of years, been opening it up to our community colleagues for anyone who would like to sign in as well and benefit from the wonderful nursing uh, uh, support uh, that uh, all of our um, uh, staff and faculty here provide uh, to uh, our staff and to the community. So. Uh, uh, all of our nursing colleagues are uh, encouraged to continue to attend as well as any ancillary services that would like to benefit from learning more about uh, organ transplantation management of patients, both in the uh, abdominal and thoracic, uh, uh, thoracic themes. Uh, the uh, thoracic transplant update and transplant will take place sometimes uh, uh, either this year or early next year up at the Thornton campus. So we, have, we hope to see uh, many of you uh, up there as well. A few housekeeping comments uh, before we go ahead and start uh, formally the program. Uh, restrooms are, uh, you know, Allen Hall to your left. Um, there will be CUs provided, obviously, at the end of the conference. Uh, what we would like for you to do is to fill in a, uh, an evaluation sheet. I'm an RN myself, so I've got an, uh, an evaluation sheet as well. It looks something like that. You have to give them the evaluation sheet in order for you to get your, CE, uh, your uh, CEU uh, certificate. Right, perfect. So uh, breakfast, lunch, snacks are provided by uh, the UC San Diego Center for Transplant. Um, we uh, certainly want to thank our uh, unit-based transplant council. Uh, this is primarily all the nursing leaders from the different uh, departments and or floors where our transplant patients are uh, cared for. And uh, they, they're the ones who put the agenda for us. So they, they tell us what so the, the decision making process for the agenda comes from the grounds up basically. Uh, all the nurses on the different floors let us know what uh, are the specific topics of interest uh, for them and for their nurses. And you know, uh, pretty much that's how we put uh, the agenda together. So again, we want to thank all the uh, unit-based transplant council. We want to definitely thank uh, our uh, educational resource colleagues uh, who have put enormous time and effort to make sure that uh, all your handouts are on the web, uh, make sure that all the registrations have taken place, and um, uh, to, to make sure that um, uh, you know, uh, registration and flow for today's events are uh, pretty much in sync with what uh, the goals uh, for this program uh, have been set to do. Uh, we um, uh, finally want to thank all of our uh, wonderful uh, speakers, uh, physicians, uh, staff, um, uh, pharmacists, uh, professors, uh, social workers, dietitians uh, who are going to be a part of your robust agenda for today. Um, and uh, without them, we couldn't have have done this. So, I mean, before any. Uh, I, I, I promised the team that I'm going to take uh, 10 minutes uh, of your time and make it like a formal presentation, because I know you don't want to listen to an administrator, but uh, you know we have some, always have wonderful stuff to share uh, with you about our organ transplant program, and what, uh, thought of giving you a quick highlight as to where we stand and who we are, uh, just for some of you who may have a good idea, but possibly a better idea as to what we represent. So, you know, Frankly, as, you, as I already shared, the uh, UCSD Center for Transplantation has two main arms. You have the abdominal uh, transplant program led by Dr. Al Hemming, and you have the thoracic transplant program, which includes heart, lung, and heart lungs, led by Dr. Seward Jameson. All of our programs are UNOS, Medicare, and Gen Commission approved when applicable. Uh, the kidney and kidney pancreas transplant program is led by Dr. Robert Steiner as the medical director. Dr. Ajay Khanna and Dr. Kristen McKeel as primary surgeons for the kidney and the kidney live donor program. For the liver program, Dr. Kuo is the primary, Alex Kuo is the primary medical director. Dr. Alan Hemming is the primary surgeon, surgical director. For the lung program, Dr. Gordon Young is the primary director. Dr. Michael Madani is the primary surgeon. 
for heart lung, Dr. Gordon Young is the primary, Dr. Mike Madani is the primary surgeon as well. And for heart alone, Dr. Eric Adler is the primary physician and Dr. Jack Copeland is the primary surgeon. So you can see that we have pretty much roots in each and every division there uh, within, the, uh, within abdominal, and, uh, abdominal surgery uh, medicine and thoracic surgery and thoracic medicine. The mechanical assist device is led by Dr. Jack Copeland as the director of the VAT program. Kind of sharing with you as well the universal phases of transplant. You're going to hear a lot about this today. Uh, different phases of transplant. Uh, and, and to give you an idea that the organ transplant program it, it does not just uh, kick into gear per se when the patient gets admitted to the hospital. The universal uh, transplant program is actually divided into four distinct phases. Phase one is from the time the patient gets referred to us, and, and that's primarily on the outpatient base for most of our programs. Uh, they can be patients uh, that are coming to us from different hospitals or different referring physicians, uh, again, seen on the outpatient basis, or they could be sick, just transferred to our hospital where they need a quick evaluation. What do we mean by evaluation is a long list of uh, workup items uh, by protocol that we subject the patient to. So again, if they're outpatient, they do that on an outpatient basis before you even see them in-house. And then if they're sick, we do that kind of expeditiously in-house. Phase two, you know, uh, when the patients get presented to a selection committee, and yes, we have a selection committee in transplant. So not everyone who gets through the referral and evaluation phase end up being added, per se, to our list as a candidate for transplantation. They have to wait on what we call a national waiting list, which is the United Network of Organ Sharing waiting list based out of Virginia. So we add their names to the national waiting list, and they are the ones who give us pretty much an idea as to who would get transplanted at the time an organ becomes available. Uh, the waiting time for phase two is somewhere between a few minutes for like a, you know, a very sick patient to multiple years, sometimes up to 10 years in kidney transplant, waiting for an organ. The phase three is the actual transplant event. This is when the patient get admitted to the hospital. We have an organ for them and they get transplanted. And then, you know, they spend whatever lengths of stay within the hospital and then after that they go either home or they get discharged to a rehab facility, uh, etc. And phase four is the long-term post-transplant care, which for us is pretty much for the life of the patient or the life of the organ. So our organ transplant program really has all of these four phases in sync. Phase three, the actual transplant event itself, is just a small uh, uh, length of stay period where the patients get admitted to the hospital. It's very critical, though, that everything you know, gets to be done right. There are tremendous amount of activities that happen. We kind of, you know, push uh, uh, multiple years worth of work into uh, seven to ten uh, days there, making sure that the psychosocial um, uh, structure that in the psychosocial evaluation is really paying dividends by the patient having caregivers available for them when they go home, making sure that their insurance is still valid, making sure that the care has been optimized, etc. Uh, some of the strength of our abdominal transplant program, uh, as I shared with you, the primarily led by Dr. Al Hemming, who is a reputed and renowned surgeon nationwide for doing ex vivo transplants and for doing, you know, um, uh, uh, very robust surgeries with uh, particularly liver cancer and liver care as well as liver transplantation. We have the biggest market share in Southern California, folks, if you didn't know that. UC San Diego is, uh, is a program to be proud of. We are still number one in uh, Southern California amongst all other transplant programs south of Los Angeles providing, um, uh, providing transplantation services. Uh, we have superior press gainy inpatient satisfaction scores, positive quality outcomes since 2006 to date. Uh, you would hear uh, you know, pretty much every week on the news that you have transplant programs who either shut down or you know, having issues with their outcomes and survivals. Our outcomes and survivals are a matter of public, um, public knowledge. You can access those on srtr.org, center specific. You can look at our center's outcomes, everybody's, uh, every, every other center's outcomes as well. Uh, we have collaborative transplant team, seasoned transplant coordinators and support staff. Uh, we have a fairly robust kidney liver uh, clinical process, protocolized pre versus post transplant, 
Uh, we are the lowest cost provider of transplant services amongst academic medical centers in the state of California. That's something to be proud of, folks. Uh, you know, compare us to other academic medical centers out there, they're spending at least, um, you know, 1.5 times more than we are, particularly in the liver program, just to get to the outcome that we, that we have here. Uh, we have dedicated abdominal transplant clinics. For those of you who don't know, it's on the second floor of the MOS building. Uh, we're the only school of medicine in San Diego, academically speaking. Uh, we have successful implementation of UNOS approved corrective measures. They were named best practices uh, by national uh, regulators. A uh, database that we're working on um, to refine its processes, define the roles and responsibilities for the transplant team. Uh, we have fairly transparent operation. All of the EQVRs per se or the variance reports that get generated in the hospital are discussed in a quality, uh, quality meeting. Um, standardized policies and uh, a lot of abstract presentations on the national and international level from our staff and from most of you as well who have contributed to many of those abstracts. So uh, if uh, that, that's something that I'm going to put out there on the table as well, any department, any floor at the hospital, if you work on a transplant specific abstract, we will be more than happy to sponsor your presence at any national or international conference that where the abstract gets accepted to. So, um, you know, for some of the leaders who may be uh, within the group here today, I think this would um, uh, really be an important piece of information for them. Um, we have multiple opportunities as well within San Diego County and surrounding counties. Uh, the growing San Diego population may help us further grow our programs. Uh, there is an absence of a liver transplant program in neighboring counties in Riverside and Orange in particular, so we have opportunities there. Kaiser Navy and the VA system are primarily sending their patients elsewhere, except for Kaiser, maybe they're using a local center here, but the Navy and the VA system are sending their patients elsewhere to, to another state, per se, Oregon, for example. And we would like to, at some point, uh, really you know, have them under the fold here, given our outcomes and statistics. Um, we have an opportunity to increase outreach clinics in the community, to feed the hepatology patients to a transplant program, increase outreach clinic to secure kidney transplant referrals to our transplant program, and potential differentiation strategy, which we started doing on the level of robotic transplant uh, nephrectomies, um, uh, donation, uh, immunosuppression, ex vivo liver, etc. Um, we have recently approved, uh, uh, we are approved by the United Network for Organ Sharing, our regulatory body for a uh, live donor liver transplant program. We haven't really si seen much um, action on that, but you know, soon you may see uh, a, few, uh, a few live donor uh, liver patients coming in for either uh, workup or actual surgeries. Uh, we are working on an initiation of a hepatobiliary liver cancer surgery center with, uh, in collaboration with the Morse Cancer Center, and uh, we are looking forward for some UCSD health system strategic plans to further acquire, um, uh, you know, other, other uh, hospitals and or feeders um, uh, to UCSD medical center here to mitigate uh, lower national budgets uh, for research, independent medical education as a result of the new you know, you, you hear something new on the news today about Obamacare, per se, that's what they call it, but the, uh, uh, the re, uh, healthcare reforms. Um, I'll leave thoracic transplantation for the thoracic uh, group. Uh, key 2012 accomplishments that are worth sharing with you all. On the community exposure innovation level, uh, everyone probably remembers the Marine receiving live donor kidney transplant. Um, this has gotten a national exposure. Uh, uh, our patient was invited to Oprah, um, and um, you know, multiple news media picked up the story, LA Times, etc. We had also a Domino liver transplant uh, in September 2011, which we did. And uh, Domino liver transplant, I hope one of our clinical colleagues can explain that in a little bit uh, as we go forward. Uh, this is when two, two patients are actually listed for transplant. Um, one would receive the initial cadaver organ and the second patient will get the uh, organ of that patient moved to them. So it's like a domino procedure. Uh, on the community outreach uh, uh, front, uh, we have opened up two outreach clinics in Murrieta and Corona. This is for liver patients. 
If you, if you know of any liver patients living in these regions, they don't need uh, to come down for initial evaluation. They can be seen in either one of these two clinics. On the national advocacy level, our transplant program supported the uh, HR Bill uh, 2969, which um, uh, is looking at uh, removing limitations of Medicare coverage uh, for kidney patients who get transplanted. Um, it is still being discussed right now. We are very hopeful that it will pass this Congress before their formal recess. And then um, we worked uh, diligently, actually, UCSD led the effort with uh, Office of the President, Dr. Stobo, uh, to submit to uh, uh, federal Medicare uh, a crosswalk between the Medicare audits and the UNOS audits because there's a lot of duplication there. So we, we said, okay, here's what CMS looks for, here's what UNOS looks for when they're on site, and hopefully the two of you could work together to prevent duplication of effort, you know, from looking at the same stuff when you're on site. Because, you know, for some of you who may remember from the last audit, you know, we spent a good couple of weeks here uh, trying to uh, manage that survey, and there were a lot of duplication from what UNOS would look for versus what CMS would look for. Uh, we have maintained the major uh, uh, center of excellence certifications for organ transplantation. And I'll cite a few, Cigna, Kaiser, Aetna, Lifetrack, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Blue Distinction, and URN. So we are, as a comprehensive organ transplant program, pretty much the hub for the major insurers in town when it comes to patients having specific insurance plans and needing uh, transplant services. We have achieved Joint Commission certification for the Mechanical Assist Device Program in November of, uh, of 2011. I apologize, that's, a, um, uh, that's an error there. And then we achieved the CMS Federal Transplant Recertification of our kidney, pancreas, liver, and lung programs um, uh, in July of 2012. We have also achieved CMS Federal Initial Certification for the Heart and Heart Lung programs uh, in uh, August uh, of uh, 2012. But the most important part here is we could not have done any of this without your help and commitment. And I mean it. Each and every one of yours help and commitment. You have put out the best um, uh, picture. You portrayed the program to its best when any of those auditors uh, were on site. So uh, on behalf of the UC San Diego Center of Transplantation, I would like to thank uh, you, thank uh, UC San Diego Medical Center staff and leadership for your continued support of our program. And hopefully, uh, you know, my grandson will be standing here um, uh, really, um, uh, or, or in the new hospital, in, in, you know, celebrating the 100 years anniversary of the organ transplant program down uh, in the future. Um, and. Um, you know, we, we are certainly looking forward to celebrating another um, 44 years uh, of providing um, uh, transplantation services to uh, San Diego communities and, and surrounding communities. So uh, again, thank you so very much for everything you do.